Reptilians, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So on today's vlog, so on today's vlog, I thought that I would finally tell you guys the full story of Sterling. I was gonna do this as just like a normal Sunday video on my channel, but I know that most of the people that are gonna care to hear his full story are actually gonna be the people that follow my vlog where I have been kind of talking about him and giving updates on him. So I thought finally I would share the full story of him with you guys as I clean out his tank because he has destroyed it. So let's get started with that. One of the reasons that it's taken me so long to talk about this story is that I just honestly didn't feel comfortable talking about it because it made me really really sad but it has been a few months since all of it happened and I think I'm finally ready to talk to you guys about it. So we are going to do that. Try not to hit his head as I take him out. So a few months back we took Sterling to the vet. Ever since I got Sterling he's always had a problem shedding his eye caps. That's actually what led me to make that video about humidity for reptiles because with Sterling we have to do all of those things. When he's about to shed, we have to soak his tank. We have to give him baths. We have to put a wet towel over the top of his tank. And I have to put moss or paper towels or whatever I happen to have in his hot hide where he's usually hanging out. And we have to keep everything soaked or else he doesn't shed right. Now the issue with this is that that means that I have to catch him on the day that he sheds. If all that isn't done on that day then he has a problem shedding his eye caps but normally that's fine because normally when that happens we just keep doing the same thing and with the next shed those eye caps come off so it's never really been a problem so one day sterling didn't shed his eye caps like i said no problem but then the next time he shed they still didn't come off and they were almost starting to look dented in kind of and I didn't feel comfortable being more abrasive on his eyes to get those eye caps off so I took him to the vet. Forewarning this story is not meant to scare you away from going to the vet. Please go to the vet if you need it but it is a word of warning that if you need to go to the vet research the vet and make sure that the vet that you're going to knows about exotic animals. This is the same clinic that I took Zaz to. This is the same clinic that did her surgery that she always sees but her vet moved. She moved to southern Alabama. I live in northern Alabama. So that's quite a bit of a drive for me. I trusted that the vet that they got to replace her was just as knowledgeable. So I took him to that vet and when I presented the problem with her she basically immediately was like yep I see his stuck eye caps. How long has this been a problem? I said since we got him he's always had this issue. And she proceeded to use eye drops and a Q-tip to try to massage those off, which is fun. I just didn't feel comfortable massaging his eyes. She then proceeded to have a nurse come in and kind of help her hold his head while she did this, which made me super sad, but I knew it needed to be done. So I didn't say anything, but they couldn't get the eye caps off. I'm just spot cleaning his tank, but he likes to poop in the crevices, so. She asked me about his husbandry and all that, and she said everything seemed good. She then asked if it was okay if she took him to the back, because she said it was a little more difficult to get that shed off than she anticipated. She quickly mentioned that she might need to use four steps to gently get the edge of that eye cap up so that she could kind of soak it and work at it a little more and I said sure she's the vet I'm not an expert I thought maybe that that was what was normal so I agreed to that about 15 20 minutes later like they were back there for quite a while but I know that they see like emergency cases and all that so I didn't think anything of it she took him to the back and after about 15-20 minutes she brought him back out and she showed me his eyes and the nurse was with her and was super happy and she was like he can see and I was like yeah he can see. Keep in mind it was only two, two times that the eye caps had stuck and she said it was the worst one she had ever seen in her life and that she had to use scissors to cut away the shed off of his eyes. And when she told me this, like immediately my heart dropped and I was terrified because you don't use scissors 
next to eyes but his eyes looked okay and like I said she's the vet and I'm just a reptile keeper so I didn't immediately question it because his eyes looked fine and he looked like he could see. He looked happy and he was moving around and all of that. So then I brought him home. I told my husband all about what happened. He seemed concerned. So that night we left him alone. He had been through a very hard day. The next morning I went to check on him. One of his eyes were completely sunken in and the other one was swollen up to about three times the size that it was supposed to be. When we left, she gave me medicine and said that she was worried that she could have caused an ulcer because she had to be more forceful than she would have liked to have been. And she had given me some antibiotic drops to take with us to just drop in there to prevent an ulcer. So we gave him those drops and everything. And we called the vet, whoever answered the phone immediately was like, oh no, bring him in. And I was like, okay, well, I just want to make sure with the vet because she did say his eyes could ulcer and that this would help that. And she's like, no, 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 you need to bring him in. So my husband brought him in that time because I had a very fussy baby. So the, my husband brought him in. In that visit, she no longer had that same, I had to be forceful mindset. Instead, she was now saying that she felt like he had very bad glaucoma and that's what caused his eye to swell up overnight and that his eyes needed to be removed. So we've gone from, I think I was too forceful to, no, 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 he had glaucoma when you brought him in and I, we have to take his eyes out now. They're very badly infected. Again, this is overnight. My husband is terrified at this point and he doesn't know what to do. So he goes ahead and schedules the appointment because they seem really concerned. They're saying if the eyes don't get taken out, then it could explode and he could instantly die. And they're making it sound like this is going to happen overnight and his eyes are never going to get better. And they're basically berating him saying, Basically, this was our fault and it never should have got that bad and just over and over and over. And so my husband just like, yeah, we can schedule the surgery for, it was like two days from then. So my husband tells me this and immediately I'm confused because I've never seen a snake have his eyes removed. It's also important to note, rewind, it's also important to note that when she was telling him this, originally she was saying that it was probably going to be okay and then she kind of switched to this has to happen this has to happen and she admitted that she had never done the surgery before and said that she could google it basically to figure out how to do this surgery i was not comfortable with that if his eyes needed to be removed like i understood but i'm not comfortable with someone removing my snake's eyes after they just admit that they're going to google it first I was not comfortable with that at all. So I started doing a lot of research. I don't recommend, if you don't know what's happening with your animal, I don't recommend just Googling things and trying to go against your doctor, but this whole situation felt very wrong to me. So I started Googling and I found very few cases of people removing snakes' eyes and I could not find any situations where it said that a snake had glaucoma and its eyes swelled up like I looked and looked I spent the entire night and half of the next day looking and I couldn't find it so I didn't feel comfortable with that so I wanted to take him to a second vet for a second opinion so the next day the nurse calls me to confirm that appointment for the following day to get his eyes removed and I explained to the nurse that we were just gonna wait and we were gonna see what was gonna happen because we didn't feel comfortable having his eyes removed and she was like okay I'll remove you from the appointment book the next morning the nurse calls us and says that we missed his surgery and I stated that I spoke to the receptionist the previous day and I asked to cancel that because we weren't comfortable with that. The nurse then starts telling me that if his eyes don't get removed, they're going to explode and he's going to die. And she's over and over saying this and she's like, they're not going to get better. And at this point, that one that had swelled up three times its size, it had gotten a little bit smaller and we were waiting to go to our second opinion appointment. So I told her that one of his eyes did seem like it got better and she instantly got quiet on the phone she just said really and I said yeah one of them got a little smaller we just want to wait and then she's like well and it was just a lot of awkward silence and then she's like well we still need to remove them because they're gonna explode and he's gonna die and this was by the way this was like a 20 minute phone call that I had with this lady where I was 
repeatedly telling her that I did not feel comfortable with that, that I did not want to get that done, and where she just kept repeatedly telling me that he was going to die. So I get off the phone, and obviously I'm in tears because this lady was very mean to me. She was very rude, and again, insinuating this was all our faults, and it was a lot. I live in a smaller area. I mean, I live in Alabama. There aren't a lot of reptile vets here. I was able to find one that's super close to my house and there is a specialist in Birmingham, which is about an hour and a half away from me, hour 45 minutes. I took him to the vet that's right down the road from me, which is actually a vet that I've taken my dog to before. And I explained the entire situation and there were two vets there that can see reptiles. They are not reptile specialists, but they can see reptiles. I explained the situation to both of them and they both seemed very concerned. They were very hesitant at first to tell me what the actual issue was. And I kind of kept probing to try to figure out what was actually wrong. And he finally stated that it is never okay to use scissors next to eyes. And he very quickly was like, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened, which is completely understandable. And he stated that what he saw looked like severe trauma to the snake's eyes. Maybe he was trying to get a feel if I was gonna like be blatantly angry and upset and yelling and stuff because after he told me that I was just like okay like that's <laughs> that's all I wanted to know and he then said that in bad shed situations which it didn't sound like I had he said that ball pythons sometimes get stuck shed on their eyes and that wasn't crazy and usually when that happens vets will soak them and if that doesn't work they take a small piece of scotch tape and very gently put that on that eye cap after soaking them and after using eye drops and all that and just kind of gently pull that away and usually they're good to go. That is the most that would have needed to be done. Anything beyond that needed to have waited and just continue to soak and continue to try that scotch tape until it worked because anything more than that becomes dangerous to the snake's eyes. So we saw him for a while. He treated for the infection. Another thing I forgot to mention, rewind. The first vet when they sent us home, they sent us home with a bag full of syringes and needles for painkillers for the snake and for antibiotics. This vet wanted to know what all was prescribed. We gave him the list, we showed him everything that they gave us, an antibiotic eye drop, which he said was pointless because eye drops on a snake's eyes don't get in, it needed to be ointment, so he fixed that. We showed him the painkillers, which they had said to use every single day, and he said that is not okay because while he may be in a little bit of pain, using painkillers every day on an exotic animal can quickly cause liver failure. And the antibiotic he ga they gave us, he said it was probably okay, but he wanted to give something stronger because he said it was very badly infected because the trauma caused was very severe. So, <laughs> this is gonna be a long story, Tom. We treated the infection, all the infection went away, and everything looked good except for his eyes. The vet told us that he would be surprised if he had vision in his eye, but he did make a lot of progress and we got all those that necrotic tissue would come off with sheds and all of that. But I still was worried because that first vet had me terrified that his eyes were gonna explode and he was gonna die overnight. And I was super scared. So we ended up calling Birmingham, which the vet that we are now seeing had told us that since they don't specialize in reptiles, anything beyond these antibiotic ointment and shots and all that, we would they would send us to Birmingham if there was anything else because they didn't want to do anything to mess anything up because they're not specialists, but they were gonna help us get him back on the right track. So I ended up going ahead and taking him to a specialist in Birmingham because of that fear. And also I just wanted positive answers. I wanted to know if he could see and all of that. We took him to that specialist who was very quiet and sullen the whole time. And I was explaining to him everything that happened and he would just kind of nod and he did a bunch of tests, put eye drops in his eyes, shine lights in his eyes, did vision tests, did a whole bunch of stuff. And what he finally said, was that there was severe trauma caused to his eyes. Snakes don't get glaucoma and if they do it is incredibly rare. Now if we look I'm gonna try to get a shot of his eyes. They are currently covered with a thick layer of scar tissue. I don't want to grab his face. He's been through a lot. They're currently covered with a thick layer of scar tissue and they almost look like they're not there. Both of them basically look like that. I don't want to force him. But if you see, there is black in there. 
and the specialist said that he thinks that the eyes are still there but the eyes keep creating scar tissue because he confirmed that that original vet cut away the protective layer permanent scale if you will that protects a ball python's eyes that's the reason they can slither around in substrate and stuff and not have their eyes poked out there is a protective scale a protective layer of tissue there and he said that that original vet cut it away and that's the reason that there's so much scar tissue but he said that he thinks that he will get most of his vision back he said that he thinks he probably has some vision now it's probably just very foggy yeah we left there super hopeful and then crazy thing happened i had a person contact me who found me through animal tracks which is my local reptile store that we love so much she contacted me and said that she heard of me through animal tracks and wanted to know if i had a veterinary preference that we use for the snake in our area i said that i used to use this vet which i'm not going to name but if you're in my area and you want to know who they are so you can avoid them i will happily let you know i just don't want to blast them on the internet anyways i had a lady and she was asking me about that and i said i used to use insert name here but my doctor moved my animals doctor not my doctor moved and the last time i went there i had a terrible experience to say the least and i would not recommend them this is before i went to the specialist before i had a full-blown confirmation of what had happened and i didn't want to just blast them and it really had been my fault because like i said they had us convinced that it was our fault and that they did nothing wrong i told her that and i told her that there was an amazing specialist in birmingham and i told her the place that i go to now which they are not a specialist but they will happily see reptiles and help you to the best of their ability. And she said that she had already had a, an appointment with this vet that I recommended against and that she was just gonna go and see how it was cause it's the only one in our area. And if anything seemed off, she would immediately leave and go to Birmingham. After this whole ordeal, literally the day after we got confirmation from the specialist. She wrote me a message back and stated that this hospital was the absolute worst. And she had gone because she thought her ball python had a respiratory infection. And they took her snake into the back without her permission and used scissors to cut her snake's eyes. So that's now twice that I know of that this hospital has done this she said that she went to Birmingham immediately after and they were appalled I'm assuming she literally went to Birmingham the day before the day after I did there was actually someone there the day I was there with the ball python that might have been her and maybe that's why the vet was so quiet and didn't really want to say much originally when you now have two people that came from the same place with the same story I mean that's insane that is what happened to his eyes like I honestly don't know what to do like what do you what what can you do in these situations the saddest thing to me other than the fact that sterling is the sweetest snake in the entire world and this happened to him sad thing is that she's still doing this to snakes i mean what are the odds that there was only two times that this has happened and that person just happened to know who i was i mean right now i'm at like 30 700 of you guys which is super awesome but the world is a very big place and for one other person to just happen to see me and happen to have this exact same thing happen at this exact same doctor to me is proof that this has probably happened a lot but yeah that is the story of sterling like i said i wasn't gonna do this story time until i knew a hundred percent what happened to him and i knew a hundred percent for sure that it was caused by that because i don't want to just say that it was someone else's fault and it not have been yeah the moral of the story is no matter what vet you take your reptile to please always do your own research that part a hundred percent is my fault for not researching who I was taking him to and just assuming that the clinic themselves did all that for me. Please just do your research before you take them somewhere. Again, I'm not trying to scare you away from going to the vet. Research them and don't be afraid to ask questions. Another lady situation, she literally thought they were taking her snake to the back to check 
for his respiratory infection and they cut his eyes without even asking her, without even addressing this problem, her snake, according to the specialist, is now completely blind. He has no vision whatsoever. I thousand percent would not have been able to make this video a month or so ago without just sobbing, but I'm finally at a point where I can talk about it because I mean, there's nothing that I can do now it's happened but yeah i just know for the future he's still the sweetest every time we take him to any vet they talk about how he's the sweetest ball python they've ever met there was actually a lady at not the specialist but the current vet we go to she was scared of snakes she's the receptionist she was scared of snakes so every time we would take him in to get his antibiotic shots she would always come in and just pet him and let him slither to her because she was using him as a way to get over that fear, which I thought was the coolest thing. He is eating okay. I mean, he's never been a great eater, but he is eating just as much as he used to, so that's good. We do have to extra heat his rats up a little bit so that he can use those heat sensors, those heat pits to find his food a little better. But that's it, guys. This is probably gonna be a very long story time video. I've been filming for about 45 minutes now, so this is probably gonna be super long. If you've made it this far, comment banana down below to let me know that you made it to the end and as always guys don't forget to follow me on my other socials and like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications every time i put out a new video yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have a fantastic day bye